Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. Last time, we did the very kind of an interactive deck called the Elven Trappings deck. We talked about the Squirtel Elven Traps archetype, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite factions, but sadly that faction hasn't been played all that much in the previous season. However, this season things have changed. Because today we're going to be talking about the Syndicate faction and their brand new, well not really brand new, but the crime archetype that has been strengthened by the new Cleaver cards. Let's head right in. So I call this deck Criminal Enterprise because that's what it's trying to do. We're trying to build our own criminal empire here by just having a lot of crime cards in our deck and some of the most fearsome crime bosses included in this deck as well from the Witcher universe. Um, this deck is a heavy control deck, as you might have seen a few of those on ladder already, but in this deck guide I'm going to try and explain this as well as I can, how to be able to use this deck most efficiently as possible. Because of course Syndicate is a very peculiar faction that requires you to manage those coins, manage to set up a few cards correctly uh, for you to be able to benefit from these cards the most. So if you're not interested in that and you know how these cards all work, uh, you can skip to the example match. But uh, if you're still here, let's go through every single card in this deck one by one and I'll go through each of their effects. So right at the bottom we have one Street Urchin, simple 4 provision card that gives you 2 power and 3 profit, so you gain 3 coins, and for each of those coins you can boost the Street Urchin by 1. So he, he, they have a fee ability that can just translate 1 coin for 1 point. That's the base ability of coins, something that you'll see uh, further in this deck being expanded upon. Then we start going into a lot of the crime cards. There's 10 crime cards in this deck in total and you can see six of them here in the four provision range. That just that is set up like this so we have a bit more leeway in the gold range and we get some of the better cards included in this deck. So the first crime card is Swindle uh, giving you four to six coins. It is randomized but for each allied crown splitters you increase the minimal amount by one. Of course up to six it doesn't go over six so if you have two crown splitters on the field this is a guaranteed six for four provisions so six coins for four provisions now that we're talking about crown cards maybe it's a good time to also talk about our leader ability our leader ability is lined pockets giving you an order ability which gives you one single coin which you can do six times and whenever you play a crime card you gain an additional coin so that swindle card that we just talked about actually is um, seven coins in in this deck if you have true uh, crown splitters giving you almost a filled pouch with just a four provision bronze card which is incredibly powerful then next up we have shakedown giving you three coins and boosting an allied unit by three of course in this deck if your leader ability is still active you get four coins instead and you can boost an allied unit by three just to give something that you want to protect a little bit more power then Bloody Good Fun is what we call a spender special card. So it gives you four coins and then you spend all of your coins. So every single coin that you still have left in your pouch and damage an enemy by that same amount. So something to keep in mind because of course with um, the leader ability you get an extra coin. But that extra coin is only gained after you've spent all your coins. So if you use Bloody Good Fun when you have two coins you will damage a unit by six. Lose those six coins and then gain another one back. Uh, because of line pocket so you'll end up with one coin even after you've done the damage very important but it's a good card to get rid of your excess coins because it just drains everything aside from one since you get one back then the crown splitters of course we're talking about the uh, faction that got a bit more support in this uh, patch uh, and one of the better cards in here is the halfling safe cracker it has Intimidate, he has Intimidate, meaning that every time you play a crime card, this card will boost itself by one. If you uh, play it, it will also boost itself by one for each crime card in your hand. So if you have four crime cards in your hand, you will play the Halfling Safecracker and he will boost himself up to seven. And then after each crime card that you play, that will keep going up. There's two of them in the deck because they're just really good cards for five provisions. Then I've included a uh, small control option in the bronze cards as well you won't see this included in many other decks but i feel like it has its uses bloody good friends which is both a crown splitters and a cut up and this card allows you to for one coin give an enemy unit bleeding for one turn except if that unit is boosted then you damage it directly by one instead 
not that special of an ability but you can keep doing this and because it has insanity you can keep damaging in return for a single point of power of this card as well so if you have this card at full power you can uh, trigger its ability four more times until of course it just dies um, just a very good control option against um, mirrors as well because you can take out the scarabs from um, Azar Javed with the two bleeding very very efficiently just for two coins something to keep in mind then we have our fourth and Technically also a 7th and 8th crime card. Payday, damage an enemy unit by 5 for 5 provisions and you gain a coin for each point of excess damage dealt. Meaning that if you kill a unit that had 4 power, you gain an extra coin back because that was the remainder of the 5 damage. You also get an extra coin, of course, for from lined pockets. Then possibly the strongest card, almost the strongest card in this deck is found in the middle provision range. So Tunnel Drill. Um, gives you one coin when you play it, so giving you, along with its five powers, six for six, but for two coins, you damage an enemy unit by one. Why is that powerful, you might think? Well, because of its passive ability. You increase that damage by one for each adjacent crown splitter, so making this the only card that has continuous damage that you can deal while also giving you more value for your coins because if you have two crown splitters this card deals three damage for every two coins you spend so giving you a 50 percent um, profit so to speak um, very powerful in this deck because there's plenty of crown splitters we've already talked about uh, three of them so the bloody good friends and the halfling safe crackers we have um, those count as crown splitters and then we'll have a few more later on then we have Kurt, uh, giving you just a Purify option, uh, but also if you don't have a use for the Purify, a very useful use, then you can also place Bounty on an enemy unit. You have plenty of control options to then take that unit out and getting more coins in return. So definitely worth the addition in this deck. Then we have our next crown splitter, Harold Gord. If you're, uh, you've played Gwent and over the past few, well, just the past year, you uh, know what this card does. Three power as a start, but on deploy, he boosts himself by the amount of special cards you've played in this game. There's a lot of crime cards, and we also have Oneromancy in this deck. So this could possibly go to 15 if you play every single card. That's probably not going to be the case. But regardless, this can be very, very high, usually around... Um, between 10 and 13 points definitely you should be able to get that by the end of the match so a very good finishing card that just gives you a lot of value and at the beginning of this deck guide I told you guys that this was going to be a very heavy control deck so uh, that's also why we've included Horson's Freak Show I'm not swearing I swear that's just the name of the man that leads this group the cut-ups but Horson's Freak Show profit two so you gain two coins has a base power of four and also has one point of armor that doesn't really show in the uh, deck builder here but it does and for every two coins you spend on this card as long as he's on the melee row you damage an enemy unit by two so again giving you an uh, equal amount of damage for the coins that you spend a good alternative for tunnel drill if you've lost it already or something like that um, but tunnel drill is definitely the stronger card here even though um, the provisions of tunnel drill are lower and the power is higher it's kind of a weird balance. I think they might actually change the provisions for Tunnel Drill after this uh, this month, but we we'll guess we'll see about that. Then, our uh, ninth crime card, Tavern Brawl, you force an enemy unit to duel an adjacent unit. So meaning that you choose a unit, then you choose a unit next to it, and then the first unit will damage the second unit by its own power. Once that is done, the second unit will damage the first unit by their remaining power, and that will go back and forth until either of them is dead. Uh, very possibly powerful card if you have two pretty high units right next to each other. Usually you want to try and aim towards cards that are about two-thirds from each other's health. Um, meaning that, for example, if you go with seven and ten, um, or maybe 6 and 10 is maybe a better option, then you go uh, 6 damage on the 10, then 4 damage on the 6, 2 damage back, and then 2 damage back again. So giving you about 12 damage just on those units. So, And the higher the unit's uh, point total go, the higher this damage will be as well. Then of course, since we're playing a lot of crime cards, we also have Furco the Sculptor, another crown splitter, that allows you to play a crime card from your deck. Any crime card from your deck, as long as you deploy him on the melee row. So a very, very powerful tutor in this deck. 
Then to have a bit of engine capabilities that are not just purely control, we also have the Dire Mutated Helm A provisions with only four power, but starts at two armor. And as long as this card has armor at the end of your turn, it boosts itself by two. And for four coins, you can actually add another point of armor. That sounds really expensive, but in most cases, this might be worth it since you're often gonna be looking for ways to spend the, your remaining coins. Cause you're, you'll be generating a lot of them with the crime cards that we have. So, well, you'll see that being useful in certain situations. And this card can go to ridiculous heights if it stays on the board long enough. Then to complete our Salamandria package, we also have Azar Javed, giving you a five power uh, unit for nine provisions, but also giving you three coins. If you deploy him on any row, he spawns a Scarab on the row, and that Scarab actually has um, one power and one armor, but has a defender status, so it blocks uh, your opponent from targeting anything else on that row. If you spend those three coins, you spawn two of them and on that row. So a very good way of protecting your strongest cards. The strongest card we'll be looking at in a minute, but other cards that you can protect, of course, are Horson's Freak Show, the Dire Mutated Hound, and um, the Tunnel Drill, obviously. Then a very good other option to take out your opponent's options is Philippa Alhart. So on deploy, she has three power. But you can spend a number of coins equal to an enemy unit's power and seize it. So grab it for yourself. This is the card in our deck that actually gives you uh, a 100% profit on your coin expenditure. But that is offset by the fact that she in her base form only gives you 3 points for 10 provisions. Uh, but any coins that she spends, she basically doubles because, for example, if you seize a 5 power unit from your opponent, you spend 5 coins, but you remove 5 points from your opponent and add them to your point total, giving you the double expenditure. But again, this card is balanced, even though a lot of people think it isn't. Most of the value of this card comes from the fact that you could possibly grab a very powerful engine card from your opponent, and that gives you most of the value. But even if you spend like 9 coins, uh, on Philippa Alhart, you only technically get 12 points from the card itself because the nine coins, of course, you gain somehow. So that's value you already had. Then the most important tutor in this deck and a very good way of tinning your deck as well is Nova Gradient Justice. So it is a crime that allows you to play a Bronze Dwarf or Crown Splitter from your deck. We've seen three of them, so those are the ones you want to go for, and that's also the reason why I've added Bloody Good Friends in the deck as well, so you have three options to do that. And if you already control a Dwarf or Crown Splitter, that can be a gold option, of course. You also spawn a Cleaver's Muscle on the Allied melee row, a five power shielded uh, Dwarf that is right on that melee row. Um, also very strong because it's a crime card, but usually you want to play this through Furco the Sculptor because Furco himself is a crown splitter, so you don't need to set up the requirement for Nova Gradient Justice. Finally, we actually get a way of actually properly playing Nova Gradient Justice in a um, deck that is actually suited for it. Because of course it is crown splitters, it is a crime, and before this, this was mostly used in Squire Tell decks to just give you easy tinning with the uh, the Mahakam Volunteers. Um, and now it actually found its home where it belonged, um, well, lore-wise at least. And it's uh, so one of the earliest cards you should be playing when you start the deck. There's also another way to pull this, of course, if you want to use Oneromancy on Furco the Sculptor and then into Novogradian Justice, you get four cards in one go, because of course you're going to be pulling another Crown Splitter from your deck, uh, which is a very efficient way of tinning your deck if you don't have all those cards in your hands. But enough about Novogradian Justice, still a very, very powerful card. Let's go into the card that it all revolves around, Cleaver himself. So Cleaver is one of the new leader cards that was added in this patch. He has Intimidate, meaning that, again, he boosts himself by one every time you play a crime card. But uh, you increase that Intimidate for one uh, by one for every adjacent crime splitter. So if he's between two of his best pals, like he is on the cards, if you look at the card art, he is flanked by two of his crown splitter members, um, cronies, as you would uh, say. His Intimidate goes up to three, so meaning that he boosts himself by three every time you play a crime card, which is increased even more by the fact that when you play him, you also play Shakedown. Remember, Shakedown is a crime card, so triggering that Intimidate, and you can boost an allied unit by three, uh, giving you four coins in this deck again. He starts only out at one power and two armor, so he's very vulnerable to cards like Morgvark, where he will just be destroyed immediately. But other than that, 
If you use Shakedown on himself, he immediately goes up to, if you don't have any Crown Splitters, for example, he goes up to five power and two armor. If you have one next to him already, that goes up to six and two armor and so on and so forth. Uh, that's not all, he also has a fee ability for four coins, he can spawn a cleaver's muscle on his row, so again that five power shielded um, crown splitter, giving you immediately an upgrade to his intimidate, unit, um, intimidate ability if you hadn't uh, got a uh, crown splitter to his right, because of course the muscle will always be spawned to the right side of that row. So very powerful. The fee ability is a 25% bonus, so you get 5 points for every 4 coins you spend, which is pretty good, but not, of course, we have more efficient ways of spending our coins in the Tunnel Drill and Philibar Isleheart. But still, it's a good way to spend those coins if you're in a pinch. And that's Cleaver, because Cleaver does the most in this deck. Uh, and one of the final cards, because kind of we talked about on Aeromancy already, is Sigi Reuven. Um, he has Intimidate, which is not the strongest ability of this card, because he gives you four coins as a base ability, but in this deck, he gives you the full Monty. So you get a full pouch from playing him, because for every unique gang category in your starting deck, you increase Sigi Reuven's initial profit by one. There's five of them in this deck. Uh, we saw the crown split. This, we saw the cut-ups. Um, there are two Salamander units over here with Azar Javed and the Mutated Hound. Then the Tavern Brawl counts as a Tight Cloaks card, so the card actually said Unique Gang Category, not for units specifically, so special cards also count. And then at the very bottom we also have the Blind Dice, and since I also added Kurt we even have a Sixth technically, so with the Witch Hunters. So more than enough to trigger that uh, 9 profit ability, giving you 13 points guaranteed with Sigurd Irvin, you just need to be careful that you leave your pouch empty when you play him. And then, just to wrap things up, Oneromancy is also in this deck, giving you a way to pull any card from your deck, and that up to two times. Giving you also a special card that is played twice, so that's why uh, Harold Gord might be very, very powerful at the end. We also have the uh, Tiger's Eye Stratagem to use, uh, since we get just four coins from that. We have plenty of ways to spend those coins, so uh, with that being said, let's head into the dreaded example match. And it sounds like we're heading into a mirror. So that's actually really good to show you how to react in these situations. So. Let's hope we pull this off, because of course it kind of depends on the uh, the draws that we get and if we manage to pull this off correctly. So, um, mulligan-wise you want to try to avoid having Novigradian Justice in your hand if you have Furco. We have Furco, so we might as well get rid of Novigradian Justice. Two bloody good funds is a bit too much of a good thing, so let's get rid of that as well and we get another save cracker. You also need to be careful that you don't have all three of your bronze crown splitters in your hands. So that would have been another mulligan criterion, but most likely our opponents will just play the same thing as we're going to do. We're just going to try and counter that as much as possible. So we get a safe cracker as a start, that gives them 7 points. I could try and take that out, uh, but that is, is a bit too soon I think. I could deny no grading justice that way, but it's just an extra point. Um, so I don't think I will, so let's just... How many crime cards do I have in my hand? I only have three in my hand, so that's going to be a six point um, halfling safe cracker. But it's better than nothing, so let's just go with Novigradian Justice immediately and play that halfling safe cracker right over here. I tend to just play those three on a row because if you also have Tunnel Drill, you can place that immediately in between there if you need some extra boosts in the first round. I would have liked one of those removal options here, by the way, because I don't really have a good way of spending my coins in this first round. So there we go, we get the, the mirror tactics, we get an overgrading justice right back, which is fine, I think. Uh, we'll try to just follow along. That will also be a six points halfling, and that gets boosted by yeah the advantage there. But the way that we played it, we've turned a little bit more than our opponent because we played Furco and then into Novigradian Justice. So we got rid of a few more cards. You can see that on the deck counts right now as well. So that is pretty okay. Um, I'm gonna play the Halfling Safecracker uh, ourselves as well, because that's to intimidate units on the field as well. And we basically do the same as our opponent. We're gonna be triggering the same amount of intimidate unless our opponent takes out one of our units, which they shouldn't just yet. 
So we get Shakedown first, which is pretty hefty uh, because that boosts a lot of those units to significant heights here. Um, I could start by getting a spend. I have a spender in the urchins right now, but right now it doesn't really seem like we need a way to spend those coins. So we're just trying and follow along actually. So let's just also play Shakedown and boost uh, Furco over here. That gives our opponent a nice juicy target for a payday, but that's going to be onto Furco, and that basically wastes that card. So that is absolutely fine by me. And then we get the tunnel drill. So that is actually not a smart move. So that basically denies them the card really, really early. Um, and I have a payday to just remove that away from the board. So we want to do that to just keep that advantage that our opponent has over us uh, at bay. So next up I'm going to be playing the Street Urchins because they give me three coins, giving me a full pouch in one go and just allowing me to boost up my uh, units a little bit and getting rid of my excess coins because that's something that you want to be able to manage in this deck. You don't want to be uh, left with too much coins. Because it looks like we're 11 points behind right now, but technically, because of the coins, we have uh, a bit more of a protection here. Because we have those six extra points, so technically it was still 24 versus 29. Okay, so we're going to do exactly what I told you that I was going to do, so the Street Urchins. And then I need to kindly count. I could spend all of them, but that feels like a bit of a waste, so we might as well just go with about... Let's keep about four, um, giving us enough to just get bloody good fun and deal about nine damage in one go if you want to. Uh, eight damage, because we don't get four. And now we got Vivaldi Bank, which is another tutor, so that's going to allow our opponent to basically get the same thinning as we had. And we got Furco, so then they get a leg up on the thinning. And that's probably going to go into a... Payday? Because bloody good fun is going to be too much. They could take out the street urchins. But I don't really need those cards anymore. And we got Shakedown. The second Shakedown, so we need to be keep, keep that in mind as well. Um, hmm... So, I'm kind of counting now. If I use Kurt to put a bounty on the, the coerced blacksmith, we do 6 points for Kurt. So that gives us to, gets us to 31. Then we play Bloody Good Fun, giving us 8 damage, but that's only going to be 7. So that is 13. We're going to get 4 points back. Is 17 points, meaning that we won't be able to get over that 49. So that is fine, I think. Let's just leave it at that. We got a bit of extra coins into the next round. Um, so that is absolutely fine. So if you haven't played Syndicate before, when you end the round with coins in your pouch, those coins are halved into the next round. If you have an uneven number, it's rounded down. So if you go, if I have three coins left, you will be left with one coin in the next round. But we're getting some good cards here. We're getting on Aeromancy as well. So we'll definitely be able to use that. Um, there's plenty of crime cards in our hands. And I could boost ourselves to the max with... Hmm. Okay, it will depend on whether our opponents will push. I don't have a lot of crime cards in hand right now. And I think Kurt is probably the least useful card here. And then, of course, the bloody good friends. Yeah, okay, we get Shakedown. That at least gives us a little bit of crime cards in our hands. Okay, but we get a pass. We get a pass. I think I'm just gonna play on Aeromancy because that's gonna be a bit of extra thinning. Yeah, on Aeromancy into the, the bloody good friends. That is gonna be absolutely fine. So on Aeromancy into the bloody good friends because of course we get on Aeromancy back in the next turn. I could have tried for, to get a card with ex some extra coins, but yeah, we're gonna be needing to uh, finish what we started with just uh, that one coin. But again, we had a pretty even foot. We basically have similar cards that we're going to try and work with. I don't know if they're going to be able to play Azar Chavit. If they do, most of those decks don't really include that. And we get Tunnel Drill as well, which is really good. We're a bit low on crime cards now. There's only three and we're going to be using Onero Mensi Grab Cleaver. I think we need the spenders 
just to be sure. If we lose Tunnel Drill, I think this is as good a hand as we're going to get. So maybe get rid of the bloody good fun and we get Cleavy. Okay. Well, we yeah, that that's as good as it's going to get. So we get the flexibility. So if you start in round three, the best thing that you can do is start uh, protecting, especially in a melee match. Um, you're basically trying to drain your opponent of corn. So if they still have something like we have, like Horsens Freak Show, then they can take uh, those guys out. If they don't, they'll be in for a world of hurt. Because Cleaver is going to be on the field in force. And it's going to be really hard for our opponent to catch up. Um, as I'm hoping that I'll be able to uh, demonstrate. But if the defender actually succeeds, then our opponent is in trouble. Because they'll give me one extra turn of setup, and that's all this deck really needs. That one extra th turn of setup that you get with Ozzy Java is enough to make this deck just as consistent as you will see it happen now. So next up, you need to play Cleaver as soon as possible, especially if you know that there's not a, a real easy way for your opponent to grab the card. Um, then you can play it as soon as possible. In certain matchup like, matchups, like against Nilfgaard, you would need to extend it a little bit, keeping them, keeping him in hand with a few extra crime cards. But we don't really need to do that, so let's play Cleaver. Boosts himself up by three, giving him a bit of protection. And then what I usually do is immediately spend four coins to get that extra Intimidate going. So now we have a bit of protection, we have that muscle right next to us, and that should be enough for now. So our opponents start spending coins, so they're definitely up to something. They might want to... Oh, it's so skewer too. Oh, never mind. So that's also a, a, a very popular opinion. Um, well, inclusion in these types of deck. I feel like the fact that you need to spend three coins first to make it immune, and then it only gives you Intimidate 2, it's still not that much value. It will go up quite a bit, and we won't be able to destroy it. But regardless... I feel like we have the better options here. So, next up, I'm guessing our opponent is going to try and destroy the Scarabs. We don't really need those Scarabs, but what we can do is get the... Um, we'll act like we don't have Tunnel Drill. We have that option since we we, we, uh, we have both options here. And then I'll just use Horton's Freak Show. It is less efficient, but with 2 times 3 damage, we would be overspending on that uh, Brawler there anyway. So let's just destroy that one Intimidate card so we deny our opponent some engine power. And that's basically how the rest of this match is going to play out. Our opponents will play something and we'll just destroy that in one go. So Philippa Ahart is going to steal one of our protective units. That is going to be absolutely fine, because we can actually steal that right back. And I'm actually not going to even steal that right back. I'm just going to destroy that in a minute. What we can do now, of course, is play Sigi Reuven. Um, he has Intimidate, so we can get a few more extra points out of that. But, of course, we also get a full pouch out of that, which is even better. Giving us the two coins that we need to just destroy that two power Scarab. Absolutely A-OK. -okay, and we'll leave those seven extra coins for later on. So, as you can see by the numbers, it looks like we're pretty far ahead. Our opponent still has Cleaver as well, but that's why I kept those coins. Because as you'll see in a minute, this was probably the biggest mistake that they could have made. Because we actually kept our Philippa, so what we're gonna do is just say, you know what, that, that just seems like a very lovely card that you have over there, and I need that second Cleaver. So now we have two Cleavers on our side of the field, and yeah, as I said, that extra bit of protection, that extra bit of time that you get from Azai Javed is enough to just get, get you in a good position, giving you the option to get um, Cleaver on the field and have a control option on the field. And after that, it's just game over um, for your opponent. It's, the, nothing is going to change uh, after that. Yeah, they can start destroying certain units, um, which they definitely did, but that's not going to change too much at this point. Um, I could do dip in, well, shakedown first. Do I need to destroy anything? Hmm, I don't think I need to. The only thing that I'm wondering if I need to just put... I think we got a forfeit. <laughs> I was discussing this with you guys, but there we go, we got a win. Um, I'll do another one just to uh, showcase this even further. And then we get Skellige, which is actually a pretty good matchup 
Um, again, we're not starting. So it might be a bit difficult here, but uh, I guess it all depends on the draws again. We get Virko, so again, we don't need Novogradian Justice per se. Kurta can probably just burn on this turn. We have Swindle, we have... I think with bloody good fun, we should probably have enough. Yeah, let's just do this. We get another Payday. Um, and I don't want to risk grabbing Novogradian Justice now, so we'll just end it there. Um, the one thing to take away from the mirror match that we just went into is that that showcase is really well that you don't need to burn your best cards at the beginning because our opponent wasted their tunnel drill, they wasted their Philippa on something useless and then that just gave us the opportunity you needed to just go to town to uh, on, on, on yeah, our opponent's remaining cards. Um... I think it's probably good. We have three crime cards again in our hand. That's not the best, but it's better than nothing. So let's just go into Crime Central, grab Novigrading Justice as we did in the last match, and then just play it with the Halfling Safecracker. There we go. So that is a nice 13 points in one turn. So it's always a good way to start. You immediately overtake your opponent, even with the stratagem. And uh, it just gives your opponent something to work with, which might not always be a good uh, idea. But in this case, I think we're doing pretty fine. And we got a Blood Eagle immediately on Furco the Sculptor, which is, of course, the target I provided. Uh, we get Vobjorn, and that will probably go into a um, Stunning Blow, I suppose. Oh no, we get some Bleeding. Huh. I could actually use Skirt for his normal Bleeding ability then. Um, there's something I needed to do first, so that bleeding is going to be annoying, but I want to get rid of that um, singular ship. Oh, do, should I just use bloody good fun on that? Because that just matches really nicely there, and I get an extra coin out of that anyway. Just trying to be efficient with our coin expenditure, and that still gives us equal points. Even though our opponent just used two tutors in, well, three tutors, so we went from blood eagle to Fabjorn. To raiding fleet into yeah okay <laughs> got it all right hmm oh that would be a very juicy target that would be a very juicy target yes I am gonna I mean it's something I rarely do I'm gonna bounty that great sword that is gonna be so sweet so sweet so they're gonna get it up to six we did waste the bloody good fun already, but there's another way we can get to... Yeah, okay, they passed. Ah, oh, they passed, that was funny. Um, that gives us a lot of coins though, so that's gonna give us a full coin pouch into the next round. So let's just grab Payday on top of that. And that gives us enough coins to uh, spend out our last days. I think I'm actually wanna wanna push this. Do I want to push this? It's Scaliger. So I think I want to push this. Uh, that's going to force them to waste their ace Twisa combo. So I feel like that's probably the better option because I have more uh, ways to, well, to just generate a whole lot of points and I have no um, Oneromancy to pull any card that I want. Gord is probably not so useful here because we're not going to be able to spend a lot of special cards. We get Philippa, always good. We don't have Azar Javad, but we can pull him. Um, so we're going to get rid of Bloody Good Friends and we get another PD. That is absolutely a okay. So, um, Azar Javad, let's just do the same thing, right? Let's start with. Who do I, do I want to? Yeah, I'm going to push. We have four coins as well, so we have a bit of an advantage there. So let's just use um, Oneromancy. We're going to be playing Azar Javad over here. And we're just going to do the same thing that we did before. The only thing that we need to be careful for is, of course, as I said in the deck building, um, Skalika has Morgfark. Morgfark instantly kills Cleaver. That is a sad thing to see, but it is exactly what happens. Um, I actually also have a Halfling Safecracker, and of course the Blood Eagle is going to take care of that. But, okay, and they're going to do that. So that's into the Marauder, giving them three damage. That might actually kill the second Scarab as well. No, it didn't. It didn't. Do I still want to do this? They wasted their second Blood Eagle. 
Meaning that their cards in hand are probably pretty good. So I want to be bleeding this. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be bleeding this with Cleaver. Um, so let's play him now. Um, play, do I want to play the Shakedown on the Scarab? No, um, that's going to be coins wasted. So let's just play Shakedown. Do I want to protect Cleaver? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because of course we know Cleaver is going to get destroyed rather soon. So they could even do that with... Um, Blaze of Glory, in which case I think it would be kind of a waste. And we got Ancrate Raiders, but again, that's two damage that we can destroy. Um, and I'm even going to do that with Tunnel Drill. We're going to get Tunnel Drill set up, giving us five coins, and we can destroy the Marauder, uh, or the Raider, I, I should say. And that is good for now. I don't want to overspend too much here. So if I can just leave it at that, I'm going to leave it at that. And now we're going, getting back into that groove of just destroying everything that our opponent plays. We're getting a gutting slash on the Scarab. That is fine. That means that now is the time that I need to start boosting Cleaver a little bit. But probably with a, a stunning blow, that's going to be enough to take that out. But Swindle gives us um, eight coins. Giving us, yeah, the three that we need to kill that Marauder. Um, and I might just use another one on Cleaver. Do we want to spend those coins? We do want to spend those coins. There we go. That's more shield, so the random damage sticks from Harold. There might actually be a Harold in that deck. I don't actually know. And we got Hjalmar on Crate, so that's going to destroy Cleaver. Cleaver is not the most dangerous card here, though. So that destroys probably the great sword, I would think. But that, as you can see, that didn't really do much. I'm actually wondering if I should stop now. Because it's starting to waste a lot of cards if we push this any further. So right now we're 17 points ahead. So our opponent needs to play 18 points in about two cards. Yeah, I'm going to play the halfling safe cracker. So we get double crown splitter support again. And then we get three damage. For those two coins, so still giving us seven points in this round. 24-0. We still have bodies on the field. Skellige is still control. And we get Harold. But Harold, not the final vault form. I forgot about that. We're still in round two. And we get another uncreated Raiders, but that just isn't gonna help much. Because we still have another payday. We don't have a lot of ways to spend coins anymore, but... There goes Payday. We still had that. And I think I'm gonna play the Mutated Hounds next. The Ace combo is gonna destroy us here. Oh, they're not gonna do it just yet. Hmm. So that's 12 points behind. Um, let's just use the Dire Mutated Hound. Um, I'll spend one more coin and then I'm gonna use those two on the Bear Witcher. The Tunnel Drill is gonna die next, but it only has two more power left, so... If they keep it alive, I still have one more Ace up my sleeve. And they don't, that's gonna be another Bear Witcher. I wanna bleed this, because as long as the Ace combo doesn't come out yet, I'm at a disadvantage. So now, hmm. So I know with Blaze of Glory, the mutated hounds are gonna die. What I can do is just spend five coins and grab one of the damaged bear witches. That would be so ridiculous. No, I'm gonna keep my coins. I just want to bleed this. Um, so let's just put Horson's Freak Show down. Um, and then it doesn't really matter how we spend those two points. So let's just deal that damage over there. I want to see that leader ability gone. Um, once that happens... Yeah, there we go. There he is. It's one coin less. Uh, one... What am I saying? It's one point less because, of course, he's dealing with the... Um, and there we go, the Mutated Hound goes down, because Veteran didn't play out completely. Now, 
So that dealt everything that they wanted to deal. And we have that combo out of the way. So let's just pass now. Now I'm curious. We, it sounds like we're behind, but remember we still have those five coins in the back. We don't have any left. Should have maybe kept those in the back because it definitely we're going for that, uh, that ace combo. We still have on Aramancy, we get Tavern Brawl, and we get Shakedown. Ah, uh, we still have Sigurd Raven, but we don't have a way to spend his coins. So Tavern Brawl is probably going to be stronger, and then we get Swindle, so... Okay, okay, that's something we can deal with. Okay, that's fine. Okay, um, I'm going to grab that. So we're going to immediately spend four coins. And grab that, so that is Philippa Ahart, and grabbing the ship. That gives us those one uh, damage ticks every single time. Spent most of our coins on that, but we kind of split the advantage there. So we're seven points ahead, and our opponent has one card extra. Skjordal is gonna kill the ship. That is fine. I'm gonna be in trouble here. Because... Bloody good friends isn't the best way to spend your coins. How far is Harold gone? Harold is gonna be pretty high. So let's just use bloody good friends and then just add bleeding on Skjordal. That's gonna be fine for now. And we could technically get another coin from Tavern Brawl, but it might be a bust. It might be an absolute bust, that card now. So Tyrk V is going over there, and that is going to be useless. Okay, that's actually pretty good. I'll show you why, uh, because Tyrk V is going to be useless. I'm going to be spending that on bleeding. So next up, um, yeah, I don't have anything for Tavern Brawl just yet. So I'm going to use on Aeromancy, and I'm going to use it on Harold. So Harold is going to be up to 11 points. So let's put that over here. And then we use the insanity ability on Skjordal, uh, on the bloody good friends, to actually just double bleed the dudes over there. So that's gonna kill bloody good friends, but we're still ahead. Now it all depends on whether they, yeah, okay. Oh, this is so stupid. I think I might have lost just barely here. Because um, of course we use the Tavern Brawl to, uh, let's see. Skewered all hit the Marauder, but that's the last thing we could have done, so. It's gonna be two more points of bleeding, but yeah, that last card is gonna do four points, uh, five points at least, so. There we go, we get seven for uh, Chengi. That was actually pretty close. That was actually a pretty good, uh, good final round there. With card disadvantage, we still almost managed to win, so uh, hopefully you guys got some tips from that as well. So one more time into the deck builder, I think the uh, the Mulligan advice I gave, so the only thing we didn't really talk about was matchups. This deck is favored against most matchups. Um, you saw that big combo there that was a bit um, sad that we ended up in card disadvantage. We had to bleed at that point because of course that ace combo is just too powerful to leave alone. But still our opponents had basically all gold cards in their final hand, so there was nothing that we could really do there. But uh, still this deck is really favored in most matchups. If you're facing a mirror, you saw the perfect example of what to do there. Be um, conservative in what you play and just keep your best cards, so especially Philippa Alhard, Azar Javad for protection for Cleaver um, in the final round, especially Tunnel Drill as well, something for the final round to just take out everything your opponent plays. Then the other unfavorable matchup against Nilfgaard, you won't have a problem. Um, you will be dealing enough damage, especially with Azar Javed protecting you with those two uh, one power units. Nilfgaard doesn't really have a good, efficient way of taking care of that. And you have enough to take out any um, Imperial forces that might be able to take those um, Scarabs out. But the only other uh, unfavorable matchup is actually last week's deck, so the Elven Trappings deck. Anything that resembles a uh, no unit deck is gonna be tough for you because you're trying to take out a lot of your opponent's units. If your opponent doesn't have units, then you're in, yeah, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to target much. Um, so there, it's just best to hold off on most of your big power plays and just keep it conservative. Try to focus on those shakedowns since those focus on your own units instead of your opponent's. 
and then just try to make it work like that. But most of this is going to be control, so you want to be spending those coins on your opponent's side by damaging everything that comes across the board. So, and that's the Criminal Enterprise deck. And I hope you guys enjoyed it, this is the end of the episode, because Syndicate, it, I feel like it's, it's getting a bad rap, so I always try to make the best out of it. I'll probably do another Syndicate deck that is based on one of my decks from January of this year. Um, that is also still very powerful in this meta. And it's just a faction that is really, really cool, but underappreciated because it's really hard to pilot as well. Hopefully I taught you a thing or two about how to pilot Syndicate. Just keep an eye on your coins. Don't overspend and don't keep those coins hanging in your pouch because otherwise you'll be losing them. So, um, let me know what you think of the deck in the comment section down below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you have tips uh, on how to improve this deck, let me know because that's what we're here for after all. We're trying to help each other out and uh, this deck is definitely going to help you out as well. So if you want to take this, I'm going to take this to pro rank. So uh, I guess I'll see you right there. So thank you guys enormously for watching and see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Thank you and goodbye. Stay nutty.